Thank you for joining Artabella as we paint a curly tree. So we'll need some white, yellow, red, and brown for our paints today, as well as a napkin to dry our brushes off with, a large, medium, and a small brush, as well as a cup of fresh, clean water. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my medium-sized brush in my yellow paint. I'm going ha about a quarter of the way up my canvas and creating a nice slope uh, downwards to create a hill and I'm going a little bit over halfway so that I can create another hill on the other side of my canvas again only going up about a quarter of a way here I take my largest brush and create a nice opening for a, a patch of white to kind of recreate a sun in the middle of my canvas and I'm just brushing so that I make sure that my paints even I don't want a thick line I just want to make sure that it all dries evenly and then I'm gonna go in with my uh, mixture of yellow and red creating some orange and I'm just slapping it all the way around now I'm going in a nice circular motion and I want to make sure that I keep that centerpiece as light as possible so I added in some white and then I just keep kind of going over it adding in some more yellow more orange more red just until I'm pretty happy with my background, but always keeping that centerpiece as bright as I can. Here you can see my yellow is a bit of a different color than what I've used previously, and that's because I added a little bit of the brown uh, to it just to create a different kind of tone um, to create more depth, I guess you could say, in the painting. a little bit of uh, white details before mixing my brown with a little bit of red and taking my largest brush or my medium brush I apologize and just filling in those hills now I'm starting um, on the higher of the two hills so that it looks like it's behind the other one uh, the reason that I mixed a little bit of red into the brown brown is to make it stick out from the tree that I'm going to be doing later on using just the brown. Why did they 
Once my hills were completely covered, I went ahead and took my small brush into some white and just kind of stroked it throughout just to give it a little bit more texture. I mentioned earlier for this next step I'm going in with my brown my flat brown for my tree and I am taking my small brush and just kind of curving it very lightly up towards the very top of my canvas to create just a nice thin base for my tree now when it comes to tackling trees the best way to do it is to go in with a very light hand um, in very fine lines so that you can kind of see what it is that you or how you want your tree because it's a lot easier to bulk your tree up than it is to condense it. Now for the tree branches I'm using that same technique going in as light handed as I can but instead of swirling outwards I'm curling inwards on some of my pieces and I'm kind of just going very loosely and placing these curls uh, every which way along the tree branch. Again, keeping everything as thin as I can. Once I've got a nice layout, I go ahead and I start thickening my branches. Now I started by creating some roots down at the bottom by just stroking quickly upwards um, to make it kind of look like it's coming out of the ground and sort of just flat on top of it. And then I go in and try as thin as I can to fill everything in. You just stay the same. Last but not least, we're gonna go ahead with our small brush in our green paint, and we're just going to start dotting away at our canvas to create our leaves. Now for this look, it's very loose and kind of all over the place, 
So you don't want a bunch of bunch together. You want to keep them pretty open and able to see. And you also want to create some floating down towards the hill, put some on the hill. You know, just kind of have it flowing all over the place. I could smile upon the day that we first met But I made some swift revisions Through whiskey blood visions And I promised not to ever, ever look And with that, we have a completed tree. So thank you guys so much for watching.